Okay, so here we are again. This is mail, uh, mail call part two. And uh, as you can see, I've already opened them, and many can guess just what's going on uh, already without even getting much into it. Let's uh, get out the initial ones first. Now, as many of you know, I've been working with a, a company in Nepal who uh, makes handmade knives. And here's my thing. Um, there's a lot of companies, a lot of people making some really great knives. There's a lot of companies that make really great knives. Um, a lot of them are factory made, like on a, an assembly line. So it's, it's, you know, I prefer handmade knives. Problem with handmade knives are they tend to be expensive. So I've been following this company here uh, for quite a long time. And there's a few out there to choose from, but uh, this is by far one of the better ones in the, in the country. Uh, aside from the fact that it helps feed actual people as opposed to feed a corporation, that makes a big difference for me for a lot of my, a lot of my items. Um, this is a, a letter uh, of authenticity as well as an introduction. Um, Ready Group, myself, and, and, and Ready Group itself has been chosen uh, by my friend Saraj, who uh, he's the founding, uh, the, the founding and managing director of. KHHI, which is Kukri House. And uh, we are uh, privileged to be the Canadian reps for uh, KHHI directly. So that's kind of cool. Anyways, I'm in the process of setting up a display wall. And here's a couple of the ones he sent uh, as samples uh, to put up there. So what we have is three different types of Kukris and uh, three different versions of their, of their sheath. And uh, I'll get more into them and make specific um, videos and pictures of them uh, later on. But for now, I'm just going to give you a little teaser so we can get to the, uh, the potatoes of what this is all about. And uh, here we go. Some of you are familiar with cookies. Some of you are not. Their traditional tools, uh, bladed tools that everybody from their farmers to their Gurkha warriors um, use. So it's a multi purpose tool from things like, you know, hacking and slashing and cutting and trimming and, you know, uh, all the way to self defense. So with these, this is their Kydex Shift Desert Warrior version. Uh, as you can see, a very thick spine. Most of the, you know, depending on the, the nature of a kukri, somebody was uh, running a thread about kukris, seems to be a, a, a reoccurring theme lately, talking about what they are and things like that. And uh, one thing he mentioned was, um, actually, it was in the thread that was mentioned that uh, real kukris are thin. Um, well, that's not entirely incorrect, and it's not entirely correct. Depending, there's there's many styles. Kukri is like calling a knife a car. There's many different types of cars. There's not just different brands of cars, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, Dodge, uh, Mercedes, Lamborghini. There's also different types of cars. There's sedan, there's coupe sedan, there's coupe, there's, you know, sports car, there's all these things. And that's exactly the same way with Kukri. Um, depending on the, the, the type of Kukri you have, it has a specific role or a specific tool method to it. Um, some of the fighting blades are, tend to be a lot thinner, um, more like a sword, you know. Uh, swords tend to be very, very thin. They have some flex to it. Um, and heavier tools like axes, well, axes are thick. Uh, there's a reason for that, because the, the purpose of their job really signifies their use. So as with, with many of those, that's the same way with a cookery. And, uh, these are, uh, I'll have the specific names of the type and uh, uh, whatnot later in more description and give a little bit of background on it, but these are thicker, um, so they can be used uh, in the bush for a multi-purpose tool. Uh, everything from chopping to battening to, to all those things that you might do uh, to, pro to make a shelter, to split firewood, you know, process firewood, uh, to kill a fish, <laughs> you know, to uh, skin and gut a, a deer or an animal. 
whatever the purpose is, you'll be able to do it with one of these blades, which is really nice. And of course, you have the uh, the authentication mark of the maker. So let's leave that for now, and I'll be okay. Now for the meat and potato. Um, just a little background. This project was started quite a while ago. Um, we've been having some difficulties in the in the shipping end of the uh, process. Currently, Nepal is just recovering from a massive earthquake. Some of you might have known about that or heard about it. Um, it caused a lot of damage, specifically to uh, uh, KHHI and uh, many of the people in the in the area. They're also going through a transition right now, politically, uh, and becoming more of a democratic country that, uh, you know, just like any other democratic country, we're voting and all that other wonderful jazz. And it's not going over so well. So a lot of people have gone on strike and protests. Um, sadly, that affected the shipment because it sat in customs over there uh, for a little over two weeks without moving. Uh, we'd actually thought it had moved and it got stuck there. Then once it reached North America and got into Canada, um, DHHL, or DHL rather, uh, it's not a company I really enjoy. They are one of the larger companies for international shipping, so you kind of have to deal with them at times. Um, but what their process is to transfer the shipment internationally from DHL to their local rep, Loomis, which uses a local carrier, which is another company, which they pass off to Canada Post. So that's four carriers it takes to get to me. And uh, that delayed it even, even more because of the constant screw up. But that said, let's get to the meat and potatoes. As you know, there was uh, five sizes in this design model. Um, there's the four inch, the six inch, the nine inch, the 12 inch, and the 15 inch. There's reason for that. Um, some people prefer smaller knives, some people uh, prefer larger knives, larger tools. Um, and the design is, is a, a very uh, effective design based off of two types of knives, two types of plates, a kukri and a tracker. And it's kind of combining the two. Now, there's a lot of companies that make kukris and, and you know, a lot of companies that make tracker style knives. And there's a lot of companies that do, you know, there's only so many designs out there. So it's usually the little features that make the difference. And uh, it's like the Jessmuck, a great freaking knife. Uh, it's modeled after another muck, you know, but it's got its own twist to it, uh, which makes some improvements over the overall design. And usually that comes down to the maker and the creator and the collaboration between the two. And this is no different. Um, so let's start with the four inch. The four inch is uh, incorporating the, uh, the, the nice wedge bevel tip. Um, which can be sharpened or unsharpened, depending on your requirements. It's got a scanty grind. All of them have a scanty grind with a 90-degree 90, 90 bevel edge. And, uh, of course, the group's logo. Um, it's hard to see, I know, but it says RG Mark IV. Uh, obviously, Mark IV because 4-inch model. Same thing with the, the, this, the 9-inch. So when I refer to the blade, or when I refer to the length, it's, I'm referring to the blade length. You can add another five five inches for uh, for the handle. So here's a nine inch blade. Same thing, same design, same tip. Virtually virtually impossible to to mess up that tip. Great for for carving, you know, feathering. Uh, you can chop with it. It's got the heavier front end, so it's good for chopping. And uh, you know, you can do so much with this tool. And I'll, I'll get a video uh, of it in action later on, obviously as well as some of the people that uh, got theirs. Um, I'm sure they'll be doing pictures and videos. And now, of course, the the beast. This is the 15-inch blade. And uh, incorporating the same things, of course. The tip and the scanty edge and the 90-degree beveled edge. And uh, it is heavy, but this thing will take some, take some beating. A lot of people uh, question about the uh, about the paracord wrap. There's a reason for that. 
Um, essentially, a lot of people like to customize their knives. They take a perfectly good knife and take off the handles and replace them with something else, and they do up other things with the blades and, you know, all kinds of things. So what we wanted to do was try to keep the price affordable enough and low enough that anybody could really, really get one of these uh, or get them all, you know, over time or whatever. So paracord, it's actually an effective, effective handle wrap. Um, but should you choose to upgrade and, and customize them, you have that option. Uh, you can also order them with a different handle as well uh, soon once we've got some, some, uh, some of the other options available. And then, of course, the sheath. The sheath is just a basic uh, cordura sheath. But again, just like handles and other parts of the knife, people like to upgrade that as well. So with this, you can uh, get a kydex or leather or, uh, you know, uh, a heavier duty cordura with, you know, uh, attachments for it, uh, for things like your ferro rod or your sharpening stone or, you know, any number of, of extra things. So that's the mail call. And uh, later on, I'll have better videos, uh, better pictures, so you guys can get a little better look. But I thought I'd share that with you. All right. Bye.